Hey friends, and welcome to the happy hour. My name is Jamie Ivy, and I am your host every week. The happy hour podcast is just what it sounds like. It's a happy hour. And I imagine that it would be as if some of our girlfriends got together and we would talk about things that are very important to us. We would talk about things that aren't that important in life, but they're fun and exciting. And so this podcast is just two girls chatting and I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that you feel like you were with us at our happy hour. Today is happy hour episode number 20. And my guest is Kate Connor. I met Kate earlier in the year when I read her book titled Enough. And when I read it, I thought I would really like to have her on the podcast. And so actually when we did this show today, it was our first time to ever talk. I truly loved having her on and I think this will be a repeat guest for sure. Today on our blog, we talk about her book, which started off from a blog post titled 10 Things I Want to Tell Teenage Girls. I think you're really going to enjoy that. We talk about what she's doing for her 29th birthday. We also go through the books that Relevant Magazine listed as the 15 books that every millennial has read. And we talk about which ones we have read and which one we haven't. We talk about what we're reading and just about her life. It is so much fun talking with her today. And I think you're going to really, really enjoy our conversations. I want to thank thanks to Brooke. She left a comment on my blog and she said, oh, I love Pitter Patter Art. Great podcast. That was the podcast that I had on with Laura Kelly, who was awesome if you haven't heard it. Then Brooke said, I must admit, I recently found your podcast and I binge listened to all of them in a week and a half during my 30 minute commute to work every day. No shame. I literally love it and have told everyone and I feel like we are such great friends. A great way to relax in the car. Brooke, thank you for listening. We are friends because we would be friends in real life and thanks for telling everyone about the podcast. I really, really appreciate that. So today you're going to love Kate Connor. Sit back, relax, whatever you're doing. If you're driving in your car like Brooke. Or if you're doing laundry, or if you're on a walk, whatever it is that you're doing, enjoy. Here's Kate. Hi, Kate. Welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. I'm so Hi. glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so happy I'm here. Okay, literally, we have known each other for the 25 seconds before we started this. So That's true. This is so fun. I was going to tell you, <laughs> I got your book. Um, it's called Enough, and I can't remember where I got it. I think I'm on some kind of like book review thing where they'll send me books and then I review them, which okay. I love that because I love to read. And so when you're like, hey, I'll send you free books, I'm like, I'm in. You're like, yes, that's yes. my jam. Yes. And so honestly, I never really get bad books, but I'm like the – just side note, I'm the best book reviewer because I'm always like, it's awesome. Like yeah. <laughs> barely ever will I say, I didn't like it. I mean, really? Yeah. Because also if it's not – if it's not fiction, if it's like someone like they've poured stuff into it, I feel like they deserve like you did a great job. This is a great right. book. <laughs> so I'm the best book reviewer ever. Every book is awesome. <laughs> but anyhow, I got your book enough and devoured it and I loved it. And after I got finished, I was like, I have to meet her and I want to interview her on a podcast. So here we are. Yay. Dreams coming true all over the place. Right Every and day. Left. Every yeah. day. Dream making. <laughs> So fun. So, so fun. tell yeah. everybody that's listening who you are because you were a new person to me. I didn't know about you until I read this book. So I, there's going to be people listening that don't know who you are. So tell everyone who you are. Yes. Okay. I'm Kate. I am a mom. First of all, I have three little angels. I started blogging. Um, I want to say three years ago, three and a half, four years ago now. Okay, um, that's relatively new. I mean, so new. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like that was yesterday. Uh -huh. I don't understand how any of this happened. Like I blinked and I don't recognize any category of my life anymore. Um, so I started blogging a couple years ago and I've moved around kind of a lot. And so I think that helped because I had people living in like five different states that knew me. So okay. I sort of had like a bigger than normal or maybe not bigger, but like broader than normal readership when you're just talking about friends and family. Yeah, right. You started with a big pot. Yeah, it was kind of cool, um, which is one of the perks of moving like every year and a half, which we did. So um, so I started blogging about just life about you know, And I put it off for a long time. I didn't want to blog because I thought like. The world does not need one more blog. There's right. 7 million blogs. There's 7 million mommy blogs. Nobody really cares that much about my kids. And if they do care about my kids, it's because they're already related to me. Right. And so I put it off for a really long time. And I guess I just had enough people that said, you know, if you ever wrote something, I would read it. Um, and I, it always comes down to one moment of like, eh, why not? Like, I don't think it was super purposeful. I just thought like, why not? And if it tanks, it tanks. Yeah. And I started writing and it started growing. And then I had one post that exploded 
Um, I, my husband was a youth pastor uh-huh. and we were living in rural Alabama and I wrote a post in the middle of the night called 10 things I want to tell teenage girls, um, which was unlike anything I'd ever written before. I don't usually do like cheeky, kitschy, like uh-huh. 10 things, right. uh, teenage girls. Like I love them. I sincerely like actually care about them and love them, but they're not my thing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know what like you mean. since yeah. I've written this book, people are like, Oh, when I tell them what my book is about, they say, oh, so is that like your thing? Like, mm-hmm. do you just minister to teenage girls? Right. And I say, no, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Surprise. Um, it was just the post that, that blew up. So anyway, all that to say, I wrote a book. Um, this post went crazy viral. I got put in touch with a lot of agents and editors, which was just like a miraculous thing. Like I didn't do anything. It was yeah. handed to me. Um, and so I had this agent and I had this publisher and they said, and I didn't have a book, which is really backwards. Like usually you have a book exactly, and then you try to get someone to publish it. And I had this publisher and we were like, what should we write about? So we wrote about this post. Um, they said, do you think you could change it into a book? Like, do you think there's enough content there? And I said, yes. And so, um, so this is my very first book project. I fin- they have two books, one for women and one for girls came out in August. Um, and we've since moved, we had such a crazy year. So I'm now living in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, which is home for me. And so that's sort of the super, super abbreviated nutshell version. I am a blogger. Um, I'm an author. I'm new to the scene. I love teenage girls. I'm a former youth worker. I'm a mom. Um, and that's what I do. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. And you're not yet 30, right? No. Oh my gosh. How is this my life? No, I'm not even 30 yet. So fun. I know. I know. Um, I planned, uh, one of my children. I have three. Okay. So my, my unplanned babies outnumber my planned babies two to one. I don't really even know how that happened. I mean, I do, but <laughs> well, we're the opposite. We have four kids and three of them are adopted and the three that are adopted were the only planned ones. So oh, the biological was just like, Oh, okay, here we go. This is happening too. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's so fun. That's so fun. Yeah. So, um, so I've got three kids, um, and I, I wanted three children. Uh I, you know, I love children. I always knew that I wanted more than a couple. Um, but I did not plan on having three babies by the time I was like 27 or 28. Uh, that was not in, in my plan. Right. Um, and I thought that maybe one day I would write a book, you know, or I'd try to write a book, you know, like when they all got in school uh-huh. and I yes. had time to maybe think about it. So I was thinking like in 10, 15 years, I would start thinking about what I might eventually want to write one day. Um, and instead, I've written two books and I have three children before I was 29 years old. And hey, I don't know amazing. how that happened. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little bit confused though on some, one yes. thing. I need you to yes. clear that. This book yes. that I have in my hand, it's called, yes. it says enough, 10 things we should be telling teenage girls. Is yes. this for women? Because you yes. said you had one for women and one for teenage girls. Yes, yes. It is absolutely for women in a lot of ways. Um, it's written to like influencers of teenage girls gotcha. because mm-hmm. um, so like teachers, youth leaders, parents. Um, and I, you know what? I've noticed I've had a lot of family members like aunts and uncles and um, grandmothers that are sending them to all their their precious, precious ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and so – it covers, they both, both books cover the content that was in the blog post that the 10 things uh-huh. that I wrote about are the 10 chapters. This one, Enough, which is the women's book, um, just has a little bit more of a grown up slant. Um, and I, there's some insight about how relating to teenagers that's specific to that book. Yeah. Um, and I think it just, forget teenagers. Like I think what I realized in this project was that what I would tell teenagers is the same thing that I would tell anybody. Um, and so I think that as you read it, or this is what happened to me as I was writing and as I've gone back to read it, as you read it, you sort of forget that it's about what I would have told teenagers and it starts being about just life. Do you know what I mean? Oh, totally. I, I have given you so much press on my podcast because I've talked about this with several people, but I was talking about this with my friend Amber Rose when we did a podcast and I was telling her about it. And I was like, the thing for me when I was reading, cause my daughter's six, she's not a teenager. You know, we used to work in student ministry and. But I was, I was reading this book. I was like, these are things I need to be reminded of. Like, this is a good book for me as just a woman. Like, these are concepts that I need to constantly be remembering. Like, it was so good. Good. Well, I'm so glad. Thank you. I really, Um, really liked it. Thank you. But yeah, so it, so it's for women. Um, first of all, just because it's for women, because Mm -hmm. I think it's stuff that applies to life always. Um, no matter where you are, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, no matter what season of life you're in. 
Um, but if, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, there is a lot of um, my experience working with teenage girls. So a lot of it is written, you know, this is what you might want to tell them and they're not going to hear you if you mm-hmm. keep saying it this way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and the other one, it's, it's the same 10 things. It's just called 10 things for teen girls. Um, but it's written directly to teenagers. And so because it's a youth book, like it's a young adult book, I got to be, I got a little bit more freedom. So there's a lot more like caps lock (laughs) and there's, yeah, there's a lot more like pop culture references and there's discussion questions and and funny footnotes and stuff. So it's a little bit uh, freer of a manuscript than the other one. So fun. Yeah. Okay. So since we're talking about this, I have so many things I want to talk to you about, but I real quick want to just read these 10 things. Okay. Yeah. I'm go going for to it. read them from your blog post actually, because I think okay. that those make a little bit more sense if you don't have the book in front of you. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So number one, you said, if you choose to wear shirts that show off your breasts, you will attract boys. I yes. love it. You will. Right. Absolutely. And we should tell adult women this as well, Kate. Right. I think so. <laughs> yes. I mean, I agree with you. <laughs> you will attract men if you choose to wear shirts to breath. Okay. Number two, you said, don't go to the tanning bed. Right. I thought that was funny. You said, you'll talk about that. You'll yeah. thank me later. Yeah. Um, number three, when you talk about your friends anonymously on Facebook, we know exactly who you're talking about. Right. Passive like, aggressive. Teenagers. <laughs> and you know, some adult women still struggle with this, but I would say teenagers, this is a huge thing. Yes. Well, and the thing is, like, we can all read between the lines. Like, people think yeah. they're speaking in some, like, super duper secret code, mm-hmm. nope. or that, like, if they don't mention names, that they're totally off the hook. And it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, we all know who you're talking about, we and do. it's so petty. Yeah. It's, it is. Okay. Number four, you said newsflash. The number of times you say, I hate drama is pretty good indicator of how much you love drama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Number five, you said, uh, quote unquote, follow your heart is probably the worst advice ever. And I, and preaching that to myself still at 36 years old all the time. Yes. It's so yeah. good. My heart will always deceive me. Uh, yeah. Number six, you said never let a man make you feel weak or inferior because you are an emotional being. Yes. Oh, That's man. Good. I would get up on a soapbox about it. Yep. Yeah. And it's not really even a man. I mean, I said a man, but like a person. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Number seven, you didn't even like write a chapter on this. You just said smoking no. is not cool. <laughs> Right. Like it's 2014. Like, I don't know why we're still having to say this. Smoking is not cool. Number eight, you said, stop saying things like, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Right. That was so good because the reason, if I can remember, because I read this in the spring or summer, something like that. When you said, um, you keep saying, I don't care what anyone thinks about me, but you talked about like you, your reputation does matter. And one of the things that I remember that was so good, you just said this, you're like, if everybody Like if one person is saying something that's poorly about your reputation, but not everyone else is, then maybe that's just that one person. If everyone is saying the same thing about your reputation, then we need to stop and think about this. Right, right. Because either they're all wrong, which I mean, is probably unlikely. Exactly. But technically it's possible. But even if they're all wrong, then there's something that you're communicating Mm -hmm. that like is lost in translation. Yep. Um, So either they're right and you need to make some serious adjustments to like your character Mm -hmm. or they're wrong and you still have to be aware and make some adjustments about what it is that you're communicating because it would be a disservice to you to continue to be misunderstood um, and have people think, right, exactly. Yeah. Number nine, this was good too. You said, don't play coy or stupid or help us to get attention. Oh my gosh. Yes. Come on, ladies. Right. Number 10, you said, you are beautiful. You are enough. That was a good, like, wrap it up. Right. Um, And it's funny, like, what I've noticed as I speak about it more and as I, you know, even going through and writing the books is that it really all is encapsulated in enough. You know what I mean? Like, when I wrote the post, it was just, like, the one thing that I wanted to tell them. It was, like, one more thing to add to the list. And as I got to writing through it, I learned... Um, that really all of these things that I'm telling them are behaviors of people who have forgotten that they're enough the way that they are. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're behaviors of people that are trying to be enough in, you know, all kinds of different ways, sometimes all of them at once. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was really cool as I was writing to get to tie everything back to that because I think that that's really um, the thing that we're all after. I love it. And I think that that's a constant battle for us too. And it just changes in whatever season you're in. Like, you know, I'm a, your parenting season, I'm in parenting season. My kids are a little bit older than yours, but I still sometimes measure myself on like my parenting skills. And then I still have to kind of pull myself back and be like, you know what? I am not 
like God doesn't see me as this. He sees me as a child of his and that is enough. Like I am enough. Um, right. And so I good. think it's like what, what I've noticed too is that like we want, we don't want to be enough. Like mm-hmm. we want to be awesome. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yes. Like we don't want to be enough because enough isn't good enough for us. And I feel like, like even when you're just purely talking about like physical beauty, which, mm-hmm. um, you know, is, is a huge issue, but it's so not even the whole picture. Um, but even if you were just to press pause on every other way that we don't feel significant in all of our relationships and all of our homes and all of our activity, if you're just thinking about physical beauty, like, cause I think it's sort of a microcosm. You get to see all the trends played out because we talk about it so much. Um, you, you have this mainstream media that's saying this very narrow definition of beauty is what's beautiful. Um, and then we've had this pushback, which by the way, I super love. <laughs> like, yeah. I love this pushback that's saying, you know, your freckles are beautiful or your dark yeah. skin is beautiful or your natural hair is beautiful or your big thighs are beautiful or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I love it. But what I've noticed is that like if, if our problem is beauty, we're fighting beauty with beauty. We're just squabbling over like, this is beautiful. No, this is beautiful. No, this is beautiful too. And what nobody is doing is stepping back and saying like, maybe the point of life is not to be beautiful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, when I'm writing enough, I'm thinking like, what if enough is enough? You know, like what if all we ever really are after is to know that we're just okay the way we are Um, and we don't have to be awesome. It's not like arbitrary self-esteem where we just choose to believe that we're great and that's going to carry us through life. Like, Maybe it's just enough to be enough and to be real. And like, I think that so much of our satisfaction, we're trying to be like, no, I'm beautiful the way that I am. Instead of saying like, I'm enough. <laughs> I'm, yeah. just, I'm just enough. I don't have to be the most beautiful or the most awesome or the most whatever. Enough is enough. And I think that that's almost an uphill battle here in America because enough is never enough. No. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm, even as you're saying that, I'm like, you know, I want to believe that. But more importantly, I want my kids to believe that. But I feel like that I have to believe that before they can believe that. Yeah, because they watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they see oh, everything. Yeah. My daughter sees everything. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's a huge struggle. It's a huge struggle. Because okay. I fight beauty with beauty. And I fight like, you know, even when I'm talking about my house, I'm like, or my clothes, right? Like I joke about living in yoga pants mm-hmm. and having food all over myself. And I wrote a post about how, like, this does not mean that I've let myself go. This, this is, like, my uniform, right? right? Like, this just means that I'm an expert. Uh-huh. This is not letting myself go. This is expertise. Like, this is mom-level expert because I know that the yoga pants work for me, right? Mm-hmm. They work for me. Right. So, but what I said in my post, and now I'm looking at it in hindsight, like, oh, my gosh, do I need to reframe this? I said, like, this is beautiful. And so I was. I was, like, fighting to say, like, no, I'm beautiful the way that I am. My house is beautiful. My clothes are beautiful. My yoga pants are beautiful. And I, in a way that they are, but I think I was trying to argue that they were physically beautiful instead of saying, like, oh, maybe that's not the point. Do you know? Right. Yes. (laughs) No, I do this in all kinds of areas of my life. Like, I'm not a very good um, decorator. So. Recently, I'm involved in something where they're like, hey, well, you need to decorate your table for everybody. And I'm like, oh, my Mm. gosh, this is like my worst nightmare. And so I show up and um, like (laughs) it's like I grabbed a tablecloth on the way out of the house and it had bleach stains all over it. So I get there and I have a tablecloth with bleach stains and some chocolate. I mean, that was as much as I could do that day. And everyone else's tables, nothing was elaborate by any means, but they were just like pretty and they had fresh flowers and name plates for people and I was just like oh my gosh but then for the rest of that week all I did was tell everybody how I'm not very good at decorating you know right. and I just kept like justifying it instead of just being like hey this is what I do this is it right this is what you see is what you get man <laughs> what you see is what you get <laughs> what? so yeah. I, I'm still telling people that story like I'm trying to justify just so they'll know that I don't think it was awesome I don't know right. it's dumb right no I know what you mean it's true we do it in everything because we can't ever let enough be enough <laughs> enough is enough that's right. what I'm say. Enough is enough. Right. Uh, okay. So we mentioned that you're not 30 yet, which are you nervous about? You have another year, but does 30 yeah. seem daunting to you? No, okay, not yeah. yet. And you know what? I think it's going to hit me at like 33. I don't know. I well, might I'll be tell you this. 30 was not a big deal for me. I hit right. it and it was awesome okay. and okay. everything was good. I wanted to have all my kids by the time I was 30 and I did. They weren't all home because two of my kids are adopted from Haiti, but I, they were all right. born in, in our lives. But anyhow. Right. I just turned 36 this last May. Okay. And I will tell you that when I hit 36, it was like the first birthday that I remember in a while. Yes, because I'm like, 
I'm on the other side now. Like no longer <laughs> am I like early thirties. Right. I'm right. closer to 40 than I am 30 now. And so right. 36 was a bit difficult. Okay. But how did, how did you cope with it? That's what I want to know. I how did it. you it's cope? It's not really like, I'm not like birthdays. I don't fear getting old. I don't think so. Maybe no. I do. And I don't even know. I don't think so. I think I just, I don't know. I mean, I love, I actually love the stage of life that I'm in. All my kids are in school and I get to do a lot more things than I have been able to do, but you handle all of those things with babies. So kudos oh my gosh. to you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, handle is a loose, you know, we're using we the word use loosely. loosely. I handle right. the things, um, sort of. When did we you handle- write with all these babies around you? Okay. I had the best babysitter in the history of babysitters ever, like ever. She was a miracle worker. Okay. Um, I don't know. Like she, I think might be an actual angel. Like I don't, Aww. maybe she's back in heaven. I mm-hmm. haven't talked to her in a while since she's we moved. Disappeared. She's disappeared. Like, no one knows her name. Like, no. <laughs> she was like random. the miracle phantom babysitter. Uh-huh. No, she's wonderful and precious. And Henry, my third child, he was born in the middle of writing these books. Oh my gosh. And um, so, so before he was born, I struggled because I just wanted to sleep all the time. Like I was like third trimester exhausted yeah. and I couldn't keep my eyes open. And I thought none of this is making sense. Like all of these words that I'm writing are, they're terrible. Right. And then I had the baby and he was my worst sleeper of all three of them. Like he just didn't nap. And I actually called like on my, th- your third kid, you don't ever really call the doctor because you figure like, unless they're really dying, like they're going to sure. be fine. Yeah. They're going to make it mm-hmm. like all of the parental worry is basically gone. Yeah. Like For they sure. have to be like gravely injured before you contact anybody. Yes. I called the pediatrician cause he wasn't sleeping. And I like to the point where like he would take like several four minute naps a day. And that's and enough to up. drive somebody crazy. Constantly, but I mean, like for probably seventy-two hours, I don't think he slept through the night at all, and he oh took gosh. maybe like ten and twelve-minute naps during the day, like mm-hmm. maybe three or four of them. He just was like up around the clock, and I couldn't get him to nap. And one day, um, our babysitter, who was watching my older two while I was back there, you know, trying to like write with this infant, she said, "Let me just watch Henry for a little bit, you know, and if I'll play with him while he's awake, and if he needs to eat or if he falls asleep, I'll bring him back." And I thought, like what the heck can't hurt. Yeah. And she got the baby to nap for the first time ever. She got him to take a bottle for the first time she ever. The like baby all of, right. Like she, of all the firsts, like my babysitter, Madeline <laughs> did them for me. Like I couldn't get him to use a bottle, but Madeline did. And I couldn't get him to nap, but Madeline did. And she was an angel. So that's the only way that it was possible. She's for sure an angel. Yeah. Yeah. We moved. And I like, that was probably, if I'm being honest, one of the hardest part about moving is I thought like, I'm, I know that I'm never going to find another Madeline. Oh. Like I wanted to bring her with me. I was like, college is overrated, man. Is. Like you Come should on. just, just like with me. <laughs> right. Yes. We can pay you in, um, like hamburger helper and That's craft macaroni awesome. and cheese. <laughs> like, just come stay with us. I don't know why so. she didn't go for that, Kate. Right? I sounds like a deal. I know. Man, <laughs> she's missing out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, but so that was it. I had good help. That's awesome. Okay, so you're not yet 30. You just Have you just celebrated your 29th birthday or are you about to? I just did in August. Okay, yeah. so tell me what this 29 nice things that you did. Or are yes. you still doing it? I'm still in the middle of them. Tell yeah. me. Okay, well, I just decided that um, I didn't. I didn't want to throw a huge party. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to organize it because um, that stresses me out because I'm an introvert and I like all my best friends, but I don't like planning stuff because it's a little high pressure and I get weird about it. Yeah. So um, I decided, and I'd seen it somewhere. This is not an original idea. I think I'd seen a couple people do it where they celebrated um, their birthdays by doing, or they spent their birthday day serving other people. Okay. Um, and I'm for parties, you know, I'm for presents, but I just thought it was like a neat way to intentionally choose like even if we celebrate even if we do parties even if you give me beautiful things which I love um and I'll pamper myself and get pedicures whatever I'm gonna choose to spend this day that is traditionally all about like celebrating me and how wonderful I am and how glad everyone is that I was born um by serving other people and so I decided 29 is young enough that I can do 29 things. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe if I was turning 50, I wouldn't want to do 50 right. things. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> right, right. But um, I decided that I could do 29 nice things for other people and I could do it over the course of a month. And so um, I made a list and I started going through it. And so there's a lot of 
really little things on there that don't take much time and don't take much effort. You know, like we went and filled parking meters for people downtown (laughs) and we went and we spent an afternoon. Oh my gosh, we picked the worst. It was blazing hot. And we helped collect all the carts that were in our giant Walmart parking lot. And we herded them back inside or back into their little cart collect, you know, people look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, and most people just thought like, oh, she's going into the store. But then I had a couple, like when we were in and out and in and out and people could see that we were sweating, like it wasn't glamorous. Like there was no, we're sweating through our clothing. You know, at first my kids are like, this is so fun. Madeline's like pushing carts and then the baby's mad because I keep taking him out (laughs) and he thinks he's going to get to like run around and I keep plopping him back inside of another cart. So, uh, but so yeah, I got, I gotten a couple crazy looks. So we did some stuff like that that was smaller and didn't require a lot of planning. Um, but then we did some bigger stuff. I actually, I think so far the one that I weighed the heaviest, Mm -hmm. like I really wanted to do it, but I really had to do some, you know, like soul searching before I committed. Um, I joined the national bone marrow registry and part of doing that. Um, you know, by doing it, you're saying that if Uh anybody is in need of a bone marrow transplant and you're a match, that you're saying that you're willing to do that, to go under testing, to right. see if you're a match. And, mm-hmm. and so I thought like, oh, that's a really great idea. But then I thought like, oh my gosh, if someone calls me, like I've got three kids, mm-hmm. I've got a job, I've got, you know, it's a health thing. And so I really weighed it, um, you know, whether or not that was just like some impulsive nice thing that I could add mm-hmm. to my list or if it was something that I felt like I could give, um, you know, would treat it with the seriousness mm-hmm. that it deserved. And then I just thought, you know, like, the only reason anybody is going to be on that list is if this is like, this is their shot. This is their last shot. And the only reason anybody is ever going to call me is if I'm it, like if Mm -hmm. I'm their best shot. And so I just thought, you know, if I'm somebody's best shot, like if they need my bone marrow to Mm -hmm. live, then of course, of course I would give it. So I did, that was one of the ones that took me the longest to sort of like process personally. Okay. What'd you have to do to do that? Because honestly, like when you say that I've thought before, whenever you see like, you'll see a show on TV about, oh, this random person was a match and they did right. this for them. I always think to myself, I don't think I would think twice about that. I would do right. that in a heartbeat. Like that doesn't, medical stuff doesn't bother me. I'm not afraid of needles. Um, I mean, I'm just, it's not a big deal, but what did you have to do to register? Oh my gosh. You know, it was the easiest thing. Oh, you don't and have to I- do testing yet? No, no. Oh. Well, it's so cool. You just, um, I went through Be The Match, um, which is an organization that, you know, that collects, I guess, people to be on the registry. So I went to Be The Match and you can, you just fill out um, a really, really basic questionnaire. It really isn't even that many health questions at all. It's just your personal information. And if you understand the process, everything is super forthcoming. You have to check the box. Like I've read this. I understand like seven times. times. Yeah. yeah. So, but they send you an envelope and all you do, they ha- it has like four little cheek swabs, like just like oh, long yeah. Q-tips uh-huh. and you just swab your cheek and mail it back and that's it. And then you're on the registry. You're, that's all that they need. And so, um, and then if you end up being a match, they mm-hmm. contact you for further testing at that point. But literally I fill, I went online, I filled out a couple forms online. It took me all of 15 minutes, truly. Um, and then I got my thing in the mail and it's like a self-addressed return envelope. I mean, they, they pay the postage and everything and you just swab your cheek and plop it back in the mail and it's done. That sounds so easy. It was the easiest thing I've ever done. Yeah. It was so great. Okay. I'm going to give this some serious thought because you I'm should. like, you. like I would impulsively just be like, I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm going right. to, I'm going to talk to Aaron about it and be like, I mean, on one hand, I'm like, why would I need to think about this? This is like, right. you can save someone's life. I'm in. Right. Uh, but again, you saying that makes me think I should think about it a little bit, but right. Well, I flew through it because I was like, Oh, this is such a great idea. And yeah. by like the hundredth time I had to check the box where they're like, <laughs> do you understand that? Like you would have to come to the hospital. Yeah. And then I thought like, okay, wait, like maybe I better stop for like a second. And so I did, yeah. I it waited for a couple weeks and then I just kept, it just kept, and I didn't get any new information. You know, I got no new insight. Right. I had no new, I had all the information up front. I just sort of decided like, you know what? Of course I would do it. It was probably more a matter of courage than anything else. Yeah. So, well, and yeah, no. Okay. I'm going to think about it, Kate. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, one of my favorite high school teachers ever, maybe my favorite high school teacher, um, we actually, I hated, I didn't hate her, but she was the most difficult teacher that I had. Mm-hmm. I hated her, her class. Um, but we've kept in touch on Facebook because Facebook is a miracle. 
And um, I get stressed out when she reads my blog post because I feel like she's going to grade them. She's my English teacher. Oh, but, yeah, she is. Yeah. I know she is. I know she's like, comma splice, comma splice, yeah. comma splice. But um, her daughter, who was born my senior year, um, has spent the last year um, battling leukemia. Mm. And so it was so... I think that was a part of what made me feel like, of course, I would do this, you know, because I would have anyway. Um, but it was sort of on the forefront of my mind. It's sort of on my radar because I know this precious little girl mm-hmm. who's, you know, 10 or 11 years old and, you know, she's gone through chemo. And um, and so it was just like, of course I would. Like, yeah. of course I would. Yeah. So. And the thing about it, I'm just thinking out loud here, and you can correct me since you are on the list. Right. Um, <laughs> the thing about it, though, is that no one would know if I was a match unless I signed up. I mean, so you would have right. all these people in need. And there could right. be so many matches, but you yes. just don't know about it. Right, right, exactly. No one would ever know. Okay, yeah. this has turned into like a right. everyone go be a donor. <laughs> go be a <laughs> yeah, go be a marrow donor, or just have, you don't even have to. And they say like maybe one of every five hundred people on the list is gonna get called in. Oh. Like it's not so, mm-hmm. it's not like a guarantee. In right. fact, so so you know if that statistic holds true, most people won't. Yeah. But I thought like why like you know. What if someone is dying and I have the exact, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't even know the medicine, but if I'm the exact type that they need, um, then they should know. (laughs) Do you donate blood? Are you a blood donor? I do. Um, I couldn't for a long time because I traveled out of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, And now I do. I did. This was another one of my 29 nice things. I went and donated blood on my actual birthday, actually. I went and I donated blood. Oh, I think I saw that. That is so funny. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. I donate blood. I used to, a long time ago when we didn't have a lot of money, I used to donate plasma and get paid for it. Okay. So many people that I know did that in college and I never did. And now I feel like I missed the boat. Oh, I was like, a grown what? woman with children when I did this. This oh. was not a college <laughs> thing for me. So good. Well, they did give me, when I donated blood, they gave me two tickets to a movie theater in town. And wow. I was like, yeah, like Party. I'll donate blood. When's the next time I can do this? Exactly. Because I'm funding date night now with my blood, literally. Okay, like I'm so... going to go give away my blood so that I can hey, go to the movie a life. I mean, right. this is not exactly. all selfish. So for right. so yeah. me, the plasma thing. So I found out that I could do this. And again, right. medical stuff does not make me queasy, whatever. Put a needle in me. It doesn't bother me. At right. this plasma place, Kate, they had childcare. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. So, and, so we're going. Like I'm going And to- I would sit there and it would take me about an hour to do the whole process. Okay. And I would read a book. So, and then they would pay me. So I got paid to read a book and have someone watch my kids for an hour. To me, it was like a win-win. I'm like, right. this, I don't know why I wouldn't do this. And for me, it was just like my own little money to do whatever, whatever I wanted with. Right, right. Like that's your spending money. That's but your- the downfall to it is I did the same arm all the time. And so I have a permanent mark right there. And I haven't done it in years. It looks like I have done drugs. Like, it looks like, like I have a, a permanent junkie. track mark. Yeah. That's so funny. Wow. Well, I've never looked into plasma donation either. So, you know, if I'm ever strapped or if the kids are driving me nuts, I may just take a nice little jaunt down oh to the hospital. Oh, my gosh. It's so <laughs> funny. It's, I'm just, I mean, when I first found out about it, I'm like, you're going to pay me? What? Right. Did you even get this. Right. That's so great. It's so <laughs> crazy. Okay. So I'm going to be a donor in a couple of weeks. I'll let you know how that you works should. out. Yeah. Let me know if you do it. If okay. you don't get freaked out by the hundred boxes you have to check that make sure you're in your right mind. Make sure I'm doing it right. Okay. Right. I saw this thing on, do you read Relevant Magazine online at all? Yes, I do. I okay. totally do. You might've seen this. Do you listen to their podcast? No, I don't. Why well, I, I say that I don't regularly, like okay. I've heard some, but I don't like on a regular basis. I, uh, they crack me up on there. So there's a plug for them. I like them as well. But I saw this in online the other day and it said 15 books every Christian millennial has owned. Okay. So it's, Let's if, see. if you're between the age of 18 and 37, which we both are, and you grew okay. up in the Christian culture, these are books that they say that we've all had. So I'm going to okay. see where we stand on this. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay. The first one, the first two were kind of, I, I don't really, it was the team study Bible. And their point was like, it was like the official Bible of youth groups in the nineties, the team right. study Bible. Oh, I remember, I don't know if I owned it, but I remember the cover. Do you? It was like, it had like that teal and sort of magenta and they almost look like paint splotches. I'm like, looking I at it right picture, now and you're exactly right. I can picture the font in my head. It's yeah. Right. Yes, I don't know if right. I personally owned it, but yeah, definitely. Okay. And then they said that when you got too old for that one, you moved on to the new student Bible, expanded and updated. So oh, there are the two the Bibles. I'm going to look up the cover. I don't know if I had that one. Yeah. 
Okay, and then, okay, so then next, the next book is something from the Cooper Adventure series by Frank Peretti. Oh, yeah, definitely. I Well, I don't know. The only Frank Peretti one I ever read was... Um, this Present Darkness? Yes. Oh, that's oh my gosh. Yeah. That is what I had. Yeah, that was the one. So I never read this Cooper series. It looks like it's maybe for boys. Okay. Maybe that's why. Who knows? Maybe I can pull it out for my kids. But This Present Darkness, that was like the thing to read. Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. And I think people tried to get me to read it and I like for a long time. And I was, so I think I was older by the time I finally took the plunge. And then I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next one, which I can't believe to say this. I've actually never read this book. Blue Like Jazz (gasps) by Donald Miller. Stop. You haven't read it? I know. I'm so behind. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Absolutely. I'm on that bandwagon so hard. I don't even care. Yeah. It, was a, it was a fantastic book. Christian you know, Millennial. That's me. Yes. <laughs> I, I could have swore. I, I wish I had my act together where I really knew this is true or not. I could have swore I saw a post by Donald Miller the other day where we, he talked about, um, oh, this is lame. I'm, I'm going to skip it. I don't even know what I'm saying because it would okay. be wrong. But he said something. <laughs> I'm going to probably cut this out since I don't know what I'm saying. But he yeah. said something about like, um, like if you – if your ideas and stuff haven't changed over the years, he's basically was saying I'm not the same person I was when I wrote Blue Like Jazz. Right. Yeah. Which well, I that's, that was interesting, but right? I've never read it. So I don't even know what he means by that. It's so good. Well, and it's really interesting because I think he, his pastor that he references is Mark Driscoll. Like, I think that's whose church he was oh, at. I didn't and know in the that. book, he just refers to him as the cussing pastor. <laughs> ah. And so, but I think a lot of that has changed, like as both of their mm-hmm. theologies has ev- have evolved. And now all there's this stuff going on with mm-hmm. Mark Driscoll. And um, so, you know, and I think as you mature, that's bound to happen. That's one of my fears, actually in writing this book is that like when my kids are actually teenagers, I'm going to go back and read it and be like, I was an idiot. I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> None of this is right. Advice right. Ever. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid yeah. of. Well, you know, I look like back and I'm like, my thinking on life and God and parenting and marriage has evolved so much over the years. I would hope that it would. Right. Right. Yes, exactly. I would hope exactly. that I don't think I know it all at 29 or even 30 or 36. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. Kudos to him for writing that. Yeah. Um, okay, the next one is something with Salty on the cover. Do you remember Salty? Okay, here's the deal. I do not. I have just learned about Salty really recently because I grew up in church, but I did not grow up in like Awana. Like okay, it was yeah. not a Southern Baptist mm-hmm. thing. And so I just have learned probably in the last few years who Salty was. Um, Salty because was a bomb. Right. And I think it's because of all these nostalgic posts, like all these people that I sort of grew up with and we share a lot of the same experiences, even the same taste and same humor. They're all like cutting up and laughing about Salty and how great that was. And I feel a little bit left out of the party because I don't understand. Well, the cover (laughs) says Salty's fantastic praise party. So if that does not pull you in, I don't know what will, Kate. I mean, that's it. (laughs) I would go to a praise party. That's the party I was left out of. I didn't get to go to Salty's fantastic praise party. Okay, and next is Adventures in Odyssey, the collection. <laughs> yes, so good. Mm. I had them on cassette tape, and I listened to them. I think my mom started it, like, on road trips, but yeah. I listened to them all the time. Like, in my bedroom by myself, I would so listen. Funny. It was, like, a mystery version that I had. I have, in the past couple of years before road trips, actually looked for this stuff because to put on for my kids, and I haven't been able to find it very well. I mean, I didn't look that hard, so there's Such that. A, yeah. But... Um, <laughs> I think my kids would actually kind of like it, especially my younger right. ones. Yeah, I think it's – I mean, I have nothing but fondness. Like, I think it was great. Uh, okay, next is Jesus Freaks by DC Talk and the Voice of the Martyrs. Yes, 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 yes. We absolutely. all had this. I read it, went through in youth group. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, the next one is a Wally McDoodle novel by Bill Myers. I don't think I know that one. I don't either. I think I'm a little – I'm right on the edge of this. Right. I'm 36. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this looks like actually someone gave my kids a bunch of old books from their kids. And actually, I think one of these books was in there. So it looks oh, really? kind of just like, I don't know, a, I guess a Christian boy's novel. Yeah. I don't know. Does okay, it have fonts like Goosebumps used to have, you know, like in all those crazy sort of pictures on the front? Yes. Yep. That's what it looks yep. like. Yeah. Okay. The next one is Three by Ted Decker. Okay, I haven't read it. So many people have recommended it to me. And I I've haven't read it either. Very skeptical because I'm real picky about Christian fiction. Like mm-hmm. I've I've read some and have enjoyed some, but I sort of think it's really hard to toe the line and it not be like really kind of cheesy. cheesy. Yep. 
But so many people have recommended it to me, so I may have to add that to my list. Okay, well, when, I'm not big into Christian fiction either, so whatever off air, you need to send me an email of whatever you like because it's hard okay. for me as well. Yeah, yeah. So Ted Decker, man, I'm thinking out loud here, but I think when we first moved to Austin, someone told us that he went to our church. I don't know about really? that. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know why that sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay, the next one is A Wrinkle in Time. <gasps> yes. That was one of my favorites, but I didn't even know that, like, I think I would have to go back and reread it to understand, like, any of the symbolism or allegory in it. Because I just read it, I think, for school, and I loved it, but I didn't, it wasn't, like, a Christian mm-hmm. book. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I um, I remember this being something in school, but I don't think I ever had to read this, and so I've never read this book. Oh, it's fantastic. It's it so, so fiction? good. You know, it's kind of weird like that, but almost in the same way, like, um, you know, the Phantom Toll Booth was a little sort of silly and like fantasy in that way. And um, I mean, it's probably the same as like Narnia or Harry Potter. You know, it's not like Mm -hmm. you could handle it. Like it's not way over the line of science fiction line. Yeah. Yeah. Next. You've been waiting on this one, Left Behind. Oh my gosh, yes, every single one. Yeah, Actually, you know, I don't think I finished the series because I think I flew through them and I caught up in real time. So I was like having, like around like oh, yeah. book eight or nine, I was like having to wait for the next one to come out. And I think like during one of those waiting periods, I sort of fell off the Left Behind yeah. wagon. But I don't think I finished all, I don't think I read all the series either. But I mean, up through like book eight or nine, like almost close to the end, I tore through them. Like one day I do, I do remember that I told my mom that I was sick and I stayed home sick and I read like the entire fifth book in one day. Shut up. My <laughs> son would do that now. We, we're on a Harry Potter kick around here. Okay. Oh, so good. And I want to hear, son, I'm 29 and I'm still on a Harry Potter kick. <laughs> I read, so my son started reading them this year. He's, he's 10, he's in fifth grade. Okay. So I like to kind of read what they're reading just so I can know. So I read the first and the second one with him this year. He is on book five, and I still have not even picked up book three yet. Have you read them before? No, I've never read them. I've never read them. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. And everyone tells me, as an adult, if you can get to, like, book four. Yes. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. I read them when I was nursing my second child because that's Mm -hmm. when I read because you have to sit on the couch constantly all day and you're awake around the clock. Like Uh I read more when I have a new baby. So when I had Sam, I decided that, you know, so many, I'd never read them and everybody raved about them. And I sort of like, this is embarrassing almost to say as a writer, but like, I'm a busy person. I don't have time for books that aren't great. Like I really pick my books from either personal recommendations mm-hmm. from friends or the bestseller list, yeah. right? Because, yeah. like, that many people can't be wrong. Right. I mean, I guess maybe they could, but they're usually not. Like, there's usually some sort of redeeming value. Like, it's at least very entertaining. Mm-hmm. So I thought, like, how can this – people are now hailing this as, like, an, a classic, and it's, like, this gateway to really loving literature. And so I thought, why not? I'm sitting on a couch around the clock anyway, and I picked them up, and I, I did. I burned through the whole series, and they're right. Like, book four – is my favorite. Um, and then from there it just grows up and it gets amazing. Now, so you'll have to tell me this because my husband has seen all the movies. He hasn't read any of them, which that's a whole nother story about like, I want my kids to have to read the book before they see the movie. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that. I wanted that to be a rule in our house and he has you know totally what's overthrown cool? that. Oh, my friend Christy, I have not done this cause my kids are a little small, but she has the best idea. Her one of her incentives for getting her daughter, who is a teenager, to read is that if she reads a book that like ends up becoming a movie, if she reads it, Chrissy will take her to the opening night, even if it's at, like a midnight showing. Like if she oh, reads the book, great. their date is to go. So they've been to like all the openings of like all the Hunger Games and yeah. Divergent, and so like to get her daughter to read, she says if the movie comes out and you read, if you read the book will go on opening night. Yeah. Isn't that so much fun? That is so like, good. I would have loved that as a kid. I sometimes will like look at the year and see like what movies are coming out that are books. And then that's what right. I want to read that year. Right. Yeah. yeah. To squeak it in under the wire. Just last night we were watching TV and there was a preview for Gone Girl. Have you read that? No, okay. but that's what everyone says. It's so good. Uh-huh. So it's good. So the preview came on and I was sitting there. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this. I read the book. And I was like, why did you read the book? If there's a movie, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, just, I can't even. I can't even relate to you. I can't even talk to you about this. Right, yeah. This is so crazy. This is so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay. So before we finish these books, I do have to ask you about Harry Potter. Okay. A lot of people have told us that after. So my ten-year-old is in book five. Okay. How many are there? Eight. Seven. Seven. Okay. There's eight movies. Seven books. Okay. So a lot of people have said 
that you should kind of wait after book five until they're a little older. Do you agree? Um, you know what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's such a good question. Cause I enjoyed them as an adult. So I'm going right. to, I'm going to go back and I'm going to think through the content as if, cause 10 is little. I was, I was wondering when I could start my kids cause mm-hmm. I'm itching to, because it's fantastic, but mine are too small. Yeah. I, you he, know, I mean, he's I'm just loving sure. it. So I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I think she does such a great job of growing her characters up gradually that you right. get to see them go through adolescence. Yeah. Um, but there's obvi- there's nothing in there, I think, that would be difficult to um, to discuss as a parent. I don't think there's anything in there that would be that would like give you pause. Mm-hmm. I think it's just you know, they go to battle. So yeah. some of the, some of the characters die. So that's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and I think there's a couple times where they swear, but it's like British swear words. Oh, Kaden already <laughs> so saw like, a word. He opened it up and he's like, mom, look at this. They said, yeah. damn it. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. Like it's not, a, that's not that it's, we're, we're not going to lose our, our mind over that at our house. Right, so. Exactly. But so I don't, you know, I don't think it would be, I guess it just depends on your parenting and your kids. Yeah. But like, now that I'm going back and thinking about those last couple books, um, it gets a little bit darker, but it's only because, you know, think the plot is kind of escalating. There's yeah. nothing in the, you know, there's no like, there's no like gore and there's no sexuality and there's no, you know, I think it would be fine. Well, I could solve this, my own dilemma if I would just read the book. Right. Like I, yeah. I was going to. <laughs> so maybe I could solve my own problem and yeah. read the books and then I don't have to ask everyone else their opinion. So yes, that's my go. goal. Okay. So we did Left Behind. The next yes. one is The Prayer of Jabez. Yes. yes. Oh man. Read the whole, I think our church went through that. Our like, church I think did too. everybody did. Yeah. Did a whole sermon series. This Bruce Wilkinson hit the money pot when all these churches started going through it. For real. Yeah. 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 Cause now there's like prayer of Jabez for teenagers, prayer exactly. of Jabez for graduates, mm-hmm. prayer, prayer of Jabez for every like possible subcategory of person, yes, prayer exactly. of Jabez for cowboys. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't know. So funny. Okay. Uh, two more. The last one is the purpose driven life by Rick Warren. Absolutely. Another yeah. one that all the churches went through. Yeah. So I went to Liberty University and they did like a giant purpose driven life con um, like conference uh-huh. and it was mandatory. Like all of our classes were canceled. Everybody had to go. We had to like sit through the seminar. And one of the things they told us was that you're getting the book. Like we're going to give you the book. And then when our statements came in, they added seven dollars <laughs> to like so it showed up like with your computer fees and with like if you had gotten a parking like anything that would be on your account for That's the university. Hilarious. It was like docked seven dollars, and so you we paid still for your joke. Own gift. Yeah, we joke now all the time about our seven dollar free book. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So you went was, to Liberty. I did. Yeah. Looky there. Yeah. Who knew? Okay. Uh, last book, and I am so anxious to see if you read this one. Oh. I kissed dating goodbye by Joshua Harris. Oh my gosh! No, I never did. I and did. I did not kiss dating goodbye either. I didn't kiss dating goodbye <laughs> either, but I did read this book. Okay. And um. So I grew up in the church. This is so short, just but I grew up in the church and then didn't really love Jesus at all. And I really think I started following God when I was like 21. So yeah. when I started following Jesus for like the first time ever, I had a pretty crazy, awful past. So yeah. my first book to figure out how do I be, a, how do I date as a Christian was this book. Oh my <laughs> word! Just dating goodbye. But I didn't really like. I took it and I was like. It has some good stuff in it, but I'm not going to kiss dating goodbye. But his follow-up book, did you read that? Oh, what was it oh, called? Um, I've read this stuff by his little brothers. Oh, who's there. that? Oh, my gosh. Okay, I think their names are Alex and Brett, but they wrote a book called Do Hard Things, and it is, like, the best ever. It's oh, so I great. I recommend that. it to all of our teenagers because okay. it's, it's about getting kids to do things that are hard. It talks about you know, the five different kinds of hard, like some things are hard because they're too big to do alone, and some mm-hmm. things are hard because they are countercultural and – um, but so it's really good, but I haven't actually read the D- Josh Harris's dating books. Okay. So then his next book, I looked it up. Gosh, he's actually written six books since then. Oh, so, books. but his next book is boy meets girl. Okay. It's about dating, I guess. I mean, okay. I read that one, but I was so long ago. I can't remember. Did he see now as we're talking about like Donald Miller, did his views change? Like, did they shift? Do you remember? I can't remember very much, but I do think that he wrote Boy Meets Girl after getting married. But I'm okay. going to, someone's going to correct me. I know it, but I, I'll go yeah. back and figure that out. But <laughs> okay. I think I remember it, him writing it as a married person, kind of like coming back about that way. Right, right. Like revisiting mm-hmm. it from a different perspective. I did, though. When I was in like seventh grade, 
this like traveling evangelist group came through our church. Oh my gosh, what was their name? Oh, this is going to kill me. But they came through the church and they would all travel. Like it was a bunch of families and they traveled in like RVs and they put on this like week long revival. Yeah. And one of the guy, one of the kids and one of the families was like my age, a year old or something. And I was just smitten with him and he was so cute. <laughs> and I was just like in love. Like I was ready to join their traveling. Yeah. You were going to hop on the RV. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I'm joining the circus. <laughs> I'm leaving my parents behind and I'm following this man. And he had told me that he was committed to never kiss until he got married. And I guarantee you that week, that was my commitment. I'm never kissing so until I got married. Which is a joke now because I had a pretty crazy past, but right, right. things changed uh, quickly. But I just remember <laughs> thinking, like, I can do this. And when you're in seventh grade, I mean, I was a lot of people have kissed by seventh grade. I had it until like no, sixteen. No, I had But when I, you, yeah, I was a late bloomer. Yeah, I was sixteen, <laughs> and then I just hit the ground running. But <laughs> when you are seventh grade, you can commit to anything. Like you yes. have no idea of what the next ten years of your life no. might look like. Right. So yes. I guess I did kiss dating goodbye for a few years. That's so great. Yeah. So those are the books. We did pretty, pretty well. I think you read more than I have. Probably like half and half. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some other ones that were definitely like from that time frame. I didn't see like those little, the younger ones, like the salty I never mm-hmm. read or the um, the other Frank Peretti one. But did you ever see the McGee and Me movies? Did oh, you watch sure. those? Yes. See, I feel like that's yes. in there with The Adventures in Odyssey. I, I loved agree. that. And the one with the tornado, that was that was for real. I could bring those back and my kids would probably watch them. Right. I think so too. The, speaking, of, speaking of bringing back, the other day I watched the Cosby show with my kids. So good. Did they love it? You know, they kind of, it's like when, before kids can transfer to like this kind of humor, it's, right. it's not like it's adult humor by any means. It's just no. older humor, you know? Right. I feel like that some of them are in the transition to appreciating that. And so right. I want to keep going with it though, because I thought it was hilarious. It was right. like bringing back so many funny memories. Yeah, that's so good. I know. Do y'all watch a lot of TV at your house? Um, okay. The thing is, I have Netflix. Uh-huh. So the thing is, I love Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try not to let my kids watch a ton. Um, they, my boys probably watch a show or two every single afternoon because mm-hmm. of their schedules. And, you know, sometimes in the morning when I'm dragging, I'm like, listen, yeah. I can't oh, answer yeah. questions. I can't talk yet. Yes. Um, I go on Netflix benders at like 11 o'clock at night all the time because I feel like my kids are finally in bed and the world is mine and I can do whatever I want mm-hmm. except for anything that takes me out of my house because my kids are here and except for anything that costs money and or except for anything that, that requires brain has to effort. Work. Yes. Right. Yeah, so basically with I can watch anything that I want. I am with you. So, um, so I do. I am always asking, like whenever we're trying to, Whenever I'm an introvert, so I always have like a running list of questions in my head to make small talk because it's just not what I'm good at. Like, okay, first of all, I have let me to stop work you real quick. really hard. Let me yeah. stop you real quick. We've never met, and this is the first time we've ever talked, and I would not have guessed that about you. See, people say that all the time because I'm a very, very, very social introvert. Like, like, I my love husband. my husband's like really? this. Yeah, uh-huh. I like I like hanging out with people. I am I feel really comfortable speaking in public. Yeah. Um, but I but it it like zaps me. Like I need yeah. I refill by being alone. Um, so I I'm super friendly, but like sometimes I get in like a mood and small talk is just like too I can't much. do it. Yeah. I'm over it. Like I'm too tired. This is all fake. You know what I mean? That's sort right. of how I end up feeling about it anyway. Yeah. I'm like, no one this we're not talking about anything that matters. Anything that so matters, I yeah. and so oh my gosh, when I was dating, it was awful. It was so hard. Uh, so I always had like this running list of like, okay, if the conversation dies out, like here's my next question. Like here's my go to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so now on the top of my list of go-to conversation questions is what would you recommend? What's the next series I need to watch on Netflix? That's a great because question, Katie. it always lends itself to such good conversation because you start talking about like, oh, I watched that too. And uh-huh. you talk about episodes and series and p- you get to learn like what people's tastes. Yeah. So it is good conversation. But I also, it also is like a means to an end. Like I re- no, for real. Like I really want to know what's the next thing that I should watch on Netflix. So what would you recommend so. to me as the next thing I should watch on Netflix? Okay. Have you seen, have you seen Sherlock yet? The British one with Benedict Cumberbatch? No, but everyone says it. That needs to be your next one because it's really good. And I think it like it crosses a lot of different tastes. Okay. So like even if you're not the kind of person that would get into like Breaking Bad or The Walking, Mm -hmm. like you could still love Sherlock almost no matter what else you're interested in. 
And it's just really well done. So that is the first one to watch if you haven't seen it. Okay. I'm going to have to add that. You know, I binge watched, I guess it would have been this spring, uh, mm-hmm. Friday Night Lights. I'd never seen that before. I did the same thing. It's so good. I loved it. It was so I loved good. It. Yeah. It took me a couple to get into it, but I think it had such high, like everyone glowed about mm-hmm. it and praised it that I sort of stuck with it long enough to get sucked in. Me too. And then literally I would like drop my kids off at school and race home. Right. <laughs> and like, I would limit myself that I could watch it as long as I was like doing something for the house. Like I'm doing laundry or dishes yes. or cooking and then I don't feel guilty about it. Exactly. Exactly. That's so do y'all exactly. have cable? No, we don't. We haven't had it in a really long time. We lived okay. in a parsonage, I guess, um, in Alabama. And when we were living there, it, they had it like hooked up. And so the church that was just like part of our, uh-huh. you know, package. Yeah. Um, but we haven't paid for cable almost the entirety of our marriage. Like we just, in the beginning it was because we were poor. Right. Um, and then, then we got it briefly and then we just decided like it wasn't something we wanted to spend our money on. Yeah. We wanted to be able to either, you know, spend other places or give other places. Right. And we had, you know, when we were newlyweds, we went to the library and rented like DVDs oh, for, sure, for their yeah. section. So, um, so that's how I watched all. I watched all, like all of House and Psych on the library from the library when I was a newlywed with because um, we had Madeline really early in our marriage. She was a surprise, yeah. and so when I was nursing Madeline, I watched Friends um, and Psych and House from the library. You know what? <laughs> I want to tell you about our cable dilemma. But small fact, I think I read somewhere that today was when the show Friends aired. How many years ago would that have been? Like I don't know, a million. 20? I can't even believe that. It is my forever favorite. Yeah. Like, I love it so much yeah. in a way that is, like, pure and true. I miss it. <laughs> yeah. So for <laughs> us with cable, we didn't have cable forever. We didn't care. And then a couple of years ago, I worked at a radio station. And yeah. I was just feeling kind of out of touch. And so I'm like, right. Aaron, I have to have cable. I have to know what's going on if I'm going to talk about this. So we got right. cable. And then we've had it ever since. We just never let go of it. And then just this, just last week, Aaron and I were looking, like, doing our fall budget. And he was like, what do you think about getting rid of cable? And I love football. Like I love football right. season. And oh, so for yes. me, it's just like, it's what I do on the weekends. That's I love the football. one thing. Right. Cause you can't yes. like, it, it, you can't get on Netflix. Exactly. You can't, and nobody, you never want to watch it after the fact. No, Cause that's boring. even if you don't know the answer, it's just not the, it's or not even the if thing. you don't know how it ends. No. Right. Yeah. So, you know, he was like, it's up to you. Cause I know that you love that. So I really was just like, I just really kept feeling like, I don't want to be ruled by TV. Like we love watching TV, but I don't want it to rule my life. So finally I was like, Aaron, do it. Let, yeah. I'm going to let it go. I don't want, you know, whatever. So he goes in the bedroom and I'm like, be strong. Okay. Like yeah. they're going to they're gonna just do what you need to do. So he goes in the bedroom and I hear him. He's in there for like longer than I think he should be in there to be canceling cable. Right. So he comes out and he's like, we still have cable. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> How did you fail? Right. He's like, well, we have it for $10 a month. And I was like, oh, okay, well, way okay, to so go. we're keeping cable. <laughs> so yeah. we still have cable for at least another year as long as we pay $10 a month. So that's our funny cable story recently. We can't get oh, rid of it. Man. No, you can't get rid of it. That's as che- I mean, that's the same as Netflix, man. I know. It's so cheap. Okay. That's so great. Yeah. Okay, well, we're almost done, but I do like to also ask all my guests, what are you reading these days? Oh, what am I reading these days? Okay, I just picked up a novel. Um, I, w- I went to the beach a couple weeks ago and I asked everybody what I should read and they said read this novel it's called Life After Life by Kate Atkinson um, and there was a, another one of hers I can't remember the name of it um, but this is just the one that, that my library had so I picked it up um, and then I realized that I was an idiot for thinking that I would be able to read on a beach with three young children yeah. so I am reading Kate Atkinson's Life After Life <laughs> And I have been reading Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. Oh, my gosh. But so far, it's really phenomenal. Like, it's really interesting. And I, I picked it up on a recommendation, so I didn't know anything about it. And, mm-hmm. I like, I did not even read the back of the book. Like, I just grabbed it, and I checked it out, and I got home. And I opened it, and I read, like, the little summary. And I was like, oh, my gosh, is this going to be weird? Because it's talking about um, – it's almost based on this premise of, like, what if. Like, if someone had lived – so it starts out with like this birth and the baby dies and then the very next chapter is a birth and the baby lives. Mm. And then and it and there's several of them. That, so it just branches off and it tells the story of this this girl's life. Um 
So I thought like, is this going to be strange? Am I going to be able to handle it? Mm -hmm. But it is so good. Like it's not weird. It's so easy to follow. It's beautifully written. The language is just gorgeous. Um, so I'm not, I'm only about a quarter of the way into it, but so far it's really great. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I, I read, I read a lot in the summer. Like it's just, it's easier for me because I don't, I don't have a lot of commitment. And so when the kids are playing outside, I can sit out there with them and read. Like I'm just, I don't work a lot in the summer because the kids are here all day. So, right. but then the school year hits and I cannot get through a book and you would think, yes. oh, they're all at school. Just read longer. But I'm really struggling getting through the book. So I'm still reading the same books that I've been reading for like three weeks. Um, right. I'm reading The Best Yes by Lisa Turkhurst. Oh, so good. I'm reading Wherever the River Runs by Kelly Mentor. I'm still reading that. Okay. And um, both of them are great. I just need to get through them. You know, right. that's my thing. I just need to get yes. through them. And then I just picked up um, Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin. So, okay. And I have no idea why I'm reading three books at the same time. I never do that, and I actually think that's foolish. But for some reason, I'm in the middle of three books. Right, right. Yeah, I, I'm i not a terrible – you know what I'm still in the middle of from like a year ago that's so funny? I picked up The Honest Toddler, the book. <laughs> from, I follow the, from the, um, her on- the account? Yes. Yes. Did you know that she has a book? No. Oh, you have to read it. That Twitter account cracks me up. Yes. It's my favorite. It's the only one that I have like on mobile notification. Like it comes to my phone and I just crack up no matter where I am. Um, it's so funny, but because it's not a story, it's been really easy to pick up and put down. So that's like my brainless read. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I am too tired to really think about anything of substance and it's just funny. And so I still am like chipping my way through it. And I just laugh every time I pick it up, whoever's around me, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to read you this one paragraph. I'm going to read you a little bit more. And I end up reading like chapters at a time because it's so so good. I am not like all the three of the books that I'm reading right now. Although the Kelly Mentor one's kind of a story like thing, but the other two, they're really like, then you have to think about it. And right. I don't know what you would call those type of books, but I really prefer to be reading a story or right. a memoir. Those are my two. Those like, are my favorite. A too. fiction book with like, like a novel. It's a good story that I can fall into or a memoir. And so I need a good one of those right now in my life. Yeah, yeah. That's Have you read one. Jeanette Walls' The Glass Castle? That was a really good memoir that no, I read. but I've heard of that many times. It's really good. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Yep. So good. And you should read Gone Girl before the movie comes out. Yes, yeah. That's a, I, so I love when I, when I do a, like a Facebook shout out, like what should I read? I come back and I reference that post over and over oh, yeah, and for over. Sure. Like I had it bookmarked because there's so many recommendations on there. Do you yeah, and that reads? one pops up. No, I don't. Like, I don't have an account. I, I go there all the time because I whenever I'm, like, scoping somebody uh-huh. out, like yeah. a book or an author. Right. But I don't, like, I don't, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? You don't use it. I, I don't contribute. Okay. I'm a taker to good, from a good reason. I a don't think I really contribute either, but I keep a running list of books. So I have, oh, really? every time I read a book, I mark it on there as read. Because when yeah. people come back and they're like, hey, what's a really good book I can read? I just go through Goodreads because although I read a lot of books this year, I forget. Like, I really oh, I do. do too. Books, yeah. they don't stick in my brain that long. And no. then I have a running list of what I want to read. So when someone yeah. tells me a book, I just add it. Well, I didn't know you could do that. I don't mm-hmm. have to check that out. Yeah, oh, it's good fancy. stuff. So then Very I just fancy. have all these books that I want to add. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Kate, this has been so fun. Yes, thank you so much. It was fun to chat this morning. I feel like that we knew each other before we started chatting. Right? And we did it. So I'm going so to – wait, no, tell me. Wait, no, I want to know. What is the next thing that I should watch on Netflix? Oh, ooh, I'm bad at this. You've already seen Friday Night Lights. Yes. Here's something I haven't seen, but Aaron keeps trying to get me to watch with him, but I can't okay. get into it, but maybe you could. The West Wing? I would love to. I, I think I've seen like one, but it was it was huge, right? Like in the huge. 90s and the early 2000s, and huge. it's supposed to be like fantastic. And right. people that have watched it are like fans. It's kind of like right. Friday Night Lights a little bit. Like these Where people, they get like loyal. Yes. Right. So maybe there's that. Okay, I'll add that to my list. I'll add it. And and Aaron is always like, can we please just watch this again? I just, I don't know. Maybe I need to give it more time like I did Friday Night Lights. But we'll yeah. see. Well, and the pilots are always really bad because mm-hmm. they're, there's too much that they're trying to cover. Yeah. So I always say, like, I'll watch two or three. And if by the third I'm not loving it, then I'll quit. But I try not to judge a show by its pilot. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like to watch on Netflix all the, like, random documentaries. Yes. Oh, I get sucked into those, man. I watched one about climbing Everest the other day and it like stuck with me. You like want to go climb it now, don't you? Yeah. Oh, actually not at all. It was one where everyone died. (laughs) It actually made you not. I always watch documentaries on food and then I'll tell Aaron, 
I'm not eating meat anymore. And he's right. like, okay. And we used to be vegetarian. So this is not a new concept for me, but I'll right. watch it and I'll just be like, I'm not eating meat anymore. And he's like, okay. Right. And then the next day, like I'm eating steak or something. You're like, no, I saw this really beautiful recipe and I oh, couldn't say. I know. Right. It's so funny. Yep. Oh, crazy. Okay. Yeah, this cool. has been a joy. And I'll yeah. tell everybody, I'm going to put everything we talked about in the show notes and I'll tell everyone how they can find your book. And we're going to give some away too. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your time. Thank You're at you. Your house, right? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna go throw everything in a bag, I think, and try to hit the road, um, but not before Starbucks. So I agree. Go. Yeah. Do you, no. Yeah. Okay, last question. I keep coming up with things. Do you like the pumpkin stuff? Um, yes, I want pumpkin everything. Oh, I just everything. had my first pumpkin latte the other day, and I'm now a fan. Yeah, I've always liked it. Like I've always loved pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread. Like I've, I sort mm-hmm. of enjoy those savory kind of the flavors anyway. Um, so I do like the pumpkin spice latte. It sometimes is a little, like I usually don't sweeten my coffee at all. Yeah. Um, and I don't really like flavors. Like I just do like coffee and half and half. Uh Um, but I can get on board with the pumpkin spice. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. I love it too. Oh my gosh. I wanted to ask you about those shirts that I love. Yes. They're so good. Tell me about this in like really like two minutes. Tell me. I don't get it because I love the shirt that I saw you wearing the other day. They're so good. They're so good. Okay. My best friend in the entire world. I do not know how I got to be the privilege of being her friend and her cousin, but that happened. Um, she and her husband Wait, started. Wait, cousins or friends? Yes, both. Oh. She is my best friend forever, but she's also my cousin and she would be my best friend if we weren't related, but we also that. happen to be, which is really cool. Yes. So um, she and her husband founded a clothing company called Walk in Love. Okay. And um, it actually started to raise money for a mission trip to Russia. And then so TJ created these shirts and sold them as a fundraiser. And then people kept asking. And so he kept making them. And it just sort of snowballed from there. Um, and so Brooke, met, they met and they got married. And so now she's the creative director for this company. And they have this gorgeous studio space. And they're all online now. Um, but they, they sell lines of t-shirts, but they've also got a bunch of really fun merchandise. Like they do really cool books and fun apartment stuff and they have accessories and, um, so, but they also do collaborations with artists. Okay. And so sometimes they'll have shirts based on, like they did an all sons and daughters collection. I don't know if you listen to their music, but they did a collection. I think that was last Christmas. I think that was last winter's line. But it was like lyrics are inspired by all of their music. And so they put stuff on mugs and shirts and stickers and pins and all that. And so this shirt they made as a collaboration with me based on the book. Mm -hmm. And so it just says, you are enough. Um, And so they designed it and it comes, there's a unisex v-neck and then there's a women's shirt that's really, it's like flowy. No, I'm looking at this flowy long sleeve thing. It yeah. This is like, I would live in this in the fall. Yes. It's amazing. And the, the sleeves are almost a little fitted and they're like ribbed, but the body of it is like super flowy and it's amazing. It looks yes. amazing. Like I'm going to get me one because it looks yes. so amazing. You should. You should. Because their stuff is also, by the way, like the softest clothing I've ever put on my body. It's amazing. And I'm not saying that because I love them. It's actually true. I'm going to put a link <laughs> in my, on this blog too so you yeah. can go yeah. check it out. They're wonderful. I've never met more like creative, talented, generous people in my whole life. Oh, so fun. And what's your cousin's name? Um, her name is Brooke. Brooke. Okay. Yep. TJ and Brooke Mesitis. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. You are enough. I love it. Kate, I love your book. I love everything thank you're you. doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so fun in to the talk. same city. We'll have to have real coffee together. Yes. Let's do that for real. I'm being serious That's about awesome. it. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Thanks have so much. Have a wonderful okay. afternoon. Yep. Guys, thanks so much for listening to the happy hour with Kate Connor. Wasn't it so much fun? I love her so much and hopefully she'll come back and be another guest. I want to tell you about a couple of things that you need to know about. First of all, Kate is giving away some of her books. And so you can go over to my blog, jamieivy.com. You can enter and I'm going to pick five winners. Each of you will get two books, which means you can keep one and you can give one away, which basically I'm just giving you a Christmas gift for someone. So you can thank me for that later. Also, her friends that run the shop Walk in Love that we talked about, they're also giving away a shirt, so you can enter for that as well. So that is so fun. Go check out jamieivy.com. Also, over there are all the links that we talk about. Um, You'll just find all kinds of fun stuff over there. One more thing I want to tell you about over on my blog. There's also, on the sidebar, there's an ad for Naptime Diaries. They have beautiful photos, beautiful pictures. Uh, They have a great Advent set right now, which I'm going to be using with my family, and I highly recommend for you to use as well. 
check it out because there's also a 10% off code on my blog. So check out jamieivy.com for all that information. And also, believe it or not, since Kate and I recorded this, I have now sent in my samples to be a bone marrow donor. I can't believe it. She inspired me and I checked it out and did it. And so I'm excited about it. Let me know if you, are you a bone marrow donor or have you wanted to do it? Let me know. Thanks so much for listening. I love hearing people tell me that they love the happy hour. And honestly, it's just so much fun for me to do this. It's so much fun for you to meet all these awesome people. So thanks for listening. If you haven't subscribed, check us out on iTunes or Stitcher. And until next week, guys, have a great week with your friends and your family. Love people well and have fun. And I will see you next week on the happy hour.